Good afternoon and welcome to episode four of All Things Ilyas. This is your host, Umer Ilyas. And just like always, I am very happy to be back. Hope you're all well. Before I start the video, please make sure if you like this podcast to like, comment and subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notifications so you can be aware of whenever I upload a short or release a new episode of the podcast. I'll start off with an exciting news with the North London Derby. Spurs nil, Arsenal 2 sit atop of the Premier League. It was a show of force and exuberant display of a pressing masterclass. A spanking, some people could call it. And in the second half, the team was able to the surge of the Spurs and they handled the pressure and see the match out to a successful victory. Afterwards, the post-game uh, shenanigans by the Spurs fan, a singular fan, obviously have been condemned, and that's not ideal for football. That should not be happening. A similar incident uh, happened uh, here in Melbourne as well with Melbourne City against Melbourne Victory, I think. And um, uh, the pitch was invaded. The goalkeeper was attacked. Uh, not a good look for the sport. Second big thing from this week is the scooping up of Mikhailo Mudrik, the Ukrainian sensation by Chelsea FC and the show of force and the depth of bank by the consortium uh, which might be a bit of a bummer for the Arsenal fans, but we have to keep in mind that there is player valuation for a reason, and Arsenal from the get-go had a clear stance of not engaging in any sort of a bidding war with any club. It's unfortunate, and hopefully Arsenal can secure more transfers in Jan, and can see the season through. I am excited. I think the time where, as an Arsenal fan, it is exciting to watch this team and to be aware of it and to see these updates about these victories and how the team as a unit has gelled. So super, super happy and pleased and excited about it. As I've been doing these podcasts for the past few weeks, this is the fourth one, as you're aware. It's sort of you get used to your own voice. Before this, if you ever showed me like a video or something with my own voice in the background, I'm not sure if if you've seen the Jose Mourinho meme where he's taken his headphones off uh, with uh, like disgust on his face. That was my reaction most of the time towards my own voice. I've always like thought about how I would appear to the people if I had like a Brad Pitt-esque voice, like a deep, attractive voice as opposed to this, whatever this is, I'm not going to comment. Um, and I might intentionally deepen my voice for this podcast as I talk to you, just like Brad Pitt in Moneyball. There are rich teams, and then there are poor teams, and then there's 50 feet of crap, and then there's us. It's an unfair game. If we try to play like Yankees in here, we'll lose to the Yankees out there. And that's my impression for Brad Pitt. And uh, this reminds me of a movie that he was in called Seven with Morgan Freeman. And uh, the creep Kevin Spacey was in that as well. Uh, and he does play a psychopath. Uh, so Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt are two detectives. Brad Pitt has recently moved to Seattle and Morgan Freeman is on his way out. Just your like typical retiring policeman who's sort of in love with the job but he has sacrificed so much for it. But he's sad but he's attached to it and um, he's a bit gloomy in the gloomy city of Seattle. And Brad Pitt is this young hunk who joins in, he's moved his wife there as well, um, and they, the, these two get paired up as partners, and then they come across these crimes being committed by this psychopath who is using these seven deadly sins 
to punish and torture his victims. Uh, there were sins like lying and obesity, um, maybe gluttony, not obesity. Um, so lying and gluttony and yada, yada, yada. I don't know the seven sins, you know, the sins. And then um, the most interesting scene is where like, like Kevin Spacey sort of, he turns himself in after he kills everyone he wants to. And Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman are on his case, but they can't find him. They almost catch him once, but he escapes. And they are inside the police station and they hear detective. Detective. Detective! You were looking for me. And Brad Pitt just goes, on the ground! On the ground! My voice squeaked. You know, I tried. I tried. I tried! Um, and at the end, when they're out and about and he's about to confess to his last crime and they're out in the field and they are waiting for a delivery and a delivery comes with Brad Pitt's wife's head in it <laughs> and Morgan Freeman opens it up and and like Kevin Spacey is like uh, is riling him up he's like so I went to your house and I played husband and Brad Pitt's like, no, no, no. What's in the box? Open the box. What's in the box? And Morgan Freeman, I can't do his voice. He's like, no, if you do this, he will win. And Brad Pitt's like, no, no. What's in the box? Open the box. And then he shoots him in the head. Another movie of his which is very good is The Assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. It's a long title and my mouth is already dry. It has got Casey Affleck, Brad Pitt, Jeremy Renner, um, and Sam Rockwell in it, and a few more people. And it's a very good movie, dude. I'm not sure how well it did at the box office, but it is a very good movie in which Brad Pitt plays this gangster and outback sort of a criminal, actually, whose name is jesse james and um i remember it's just his like very his cold portrayal of the character was pretty good was pretty good and i think the movie got good reviews as well i also think about having like the matthew mcconaughey voice like all right all right all right and you just sit there acting all cool and shit in your lincoln and you look around and they pay you heaps of money because your voice is cool I've been thinking about Hollywood stereotypes and you've got your like typical Indian guy who's like, my name is Rajesh. I am here to talk to you. Please call me on this number. I am from India. And then they've also got a stereotype for the Muslims who are always super like the bad guys. And they've also got a stereotype for the Russians. They're always angry. My dogs are hungry. Give me my half. Give me my half. My dogs are hungry. Why you have to be here? You American. I'm a Russian. And there's also a stereotype for um, Italians. The stereotype for Italians is like, Mamma mia! Leonardo, my friend, how are you? So good to see you. Spaghetti, Bologna, Roma, mamma mia. Very happy to see ya. And, um, and then they've got a stereotype for the guy in New York, obviously, which you all know. Hey, I'm walking over here. Which is uh, in almost every movie with New York, there's like rats. Some guy's mad. He yells at stuff and people are like, ah. New York. Just like that, Bollywood also has a stereotype for their neighbors in the Northwest. Um, it usually consists of being in the shalwar kameez, obviously, holding beads for the prayers, having a topi on your head, uh, speaking very poetic, pure, old-school Urdu, and um, that's always interesting to watch. And it's hilarious, actually. Like this, um, 
the gap of understanding is just amazing. But just like Hollywood, they gotta do it. This is their this is their thing. This is their go to like character. And um, there's a movie coming out on Netflix, I think, with uh, an Indian spy in Pakistan who's like trying to sort of like get to the uh, to the nuclear uh, resources. I've been fortunate enough because of this this podcast to get a clip of what happens in the movie and uh, and I've been allowed to show it to you in this podcast. So I'm going to play it for you now and I hope you enjoy it. Ah, be majnu bol raha hu be. Aaye Lahore mein wo Lahore mein blend ho gaya hai. Hum ko inki janta mein dekhega to chakra aa jayega be. Thair be thair. Aadab janab हमारा मकसद आपके जौहरी असासों की मकाम बंदी करना हरगिज नहीं है इसके बरक्स हम तो एक कौम को उजागर करना चाहते हैं आप अलहदा पसंदी की जिस आगोश में सोए हैं हम आपको इस आगोश से उठाना चाहते हैं उठ जाओ नौजवानों उठ जाओ नौजवानों अपने जोहरी असासों की लोकेशन दो कुन पाया कुन पाया कुन आई होप यू एंजॉयड दिस एक्सक्लूसिव क्लिप व्हिच वाज सेंट टू द ऑल थिंग्स इलियास पॉडकास्ट फॉर दिस न्यू मूवी कॉल्ड एजेंट एजेंट मजनू व्हिच रिमाइंड्स मी आई शुड प्रोबब्ली लुक अप द नेम ऑफ द मूवी आई हैव जस्ट सीन इट इन टिकटॉक्स सो going back to um having a deeper voice my need my want to have a deeper voice a deeper voice i'm going to finish this podcast like this up until the end give you a little sample of how it sound with a deep voice yeah all right it's a good day outside camber it's a good day outside I might have constipation. I don't know. Yes, we'll find out. Yes, we'll find out. This reminds me uh when the dark night came out um it was we had a movie night in school. They decided that it was a good idea to show um that movie to a bunch of hormonal freaks um at the school. I did got into a fight with another kid. he was from chang i can't remember his name um he had glasses and curly hair and if i'm being honest if my friends weren't around he probably would have beaten my ass and that's the truth and i have matured enough to admit that now at the time they had to hold me back at the time they had to hold me back Cause I'm a badass. I'm a badass. Um. So after that movie, after I watched it, yeah, boy, I thought that someday, one day, I could make it into acting. I was always a fan of mo- of uh, of uh, of watching movies and and uh, TV shows, and I watched. almost everything available to man at the time like i've watched so many movies and so many series and tv shows uh true detective breaking bad the dark knight movies lord of the rings um hannibal i also have a story about that um however so after watching the dark knight like every other actor with some talent and potential i decided to have a go at acting myself so a few years go by now i am older but the dream is still there obviously the dream never leaves it stayed with me so before the dark knight rises came out i made my own little video cuz Heath Ledger had passed away and in my head I could revive the character of the Joker 
And if I was able to put my stuff on YouTube or Facebook or social media of any sort, some studio would discover me. And eventually I would be asked to play the Joker after Heath Ledger. And I would carry his legacy. So this boy from Lahore was going to Hollywood. I was born for bigger things, obviously. And I was going to do that. So my plan of action was to use my sister's makeup. And I bought a wig from the market. And um, I had a jacket on. I found a old tie as well, like a necktie. And I convinced my friend to... Um, I convinced my childhood friend to... Um, <laughs> take part in my video. And I will show that to you in real time. And um, I hope that you enjoy that with me. Happy Halloween. Take a tree. Oh, sir. Are you hurt? Did someone cut you? <laughs> That's my friend in a mask tied to a chair. And just an FYI, this guy's like 6162. <laughs> oh, and that voice as well, dude. Oh. Was it the Joker? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Save me. <laughs> Save? Save you? <laughs> the bad man's gonna save you, right? <laughs> oh, God. Oh. I am cringing, dude. Oh. Mm -hmm. Quiet, 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 quiet. People will die every single day. <laughs> it's my sister's makeup, dude. <laughs> it's my sister's makeup. And she was like, this is the last time. It's, not gonna, it's never going to happen again. I'm sick of your shit. Oh. Hey, Me. Let's shut you up first. They think you can save them for me. I'll see what you do. I'll be right here. You want to know something funny? Before I cut them, I make them and raise madness. And I whisper in your ears, the dark night falls to me. So what do you say? Hmm? Let them the chaos begin. All right, look at that. Mm. Oh wow, Oscar worthy dude. Oh wow, look at that. I am um, not embarrassed at all. The makeup artist was my sister. My friend was the extra. The dialogue was written by me, directed by me as well. Um, we lived on a busy street and I shot this on the roof of my house. So you could hear people and rickshaws and like cars and stuff go by. So at the time I added the rain music to sort of, you know, like block it all out. And um, yeah, that's my, uh, that's my go at the Joker. I made another video. I'm not sure because it'll get flagged for sure because it got flagged by YouTube, by YouTube uh, whenever I shot it. So I'm pretty sure it's going to get flagged again. But I'll have a look and I'll uh, share that with you as well. Um, that was my ticket to Hollywood, dude. My ticket to Hollywood. And um, it could still happen. It could still happen. I always loved the impression for the Joker, dude. I just, I was obsessed with it. You know, uh, when he robs the bank um, and the guy... 
uh, he shoots at him and he says, What do you believe in? What do you believe in? And he says, I believe what doesn't kill you makes you stranger. That one and um and then when he just like pops into that meeting with the mob and uh um I forget the dialogue, dude. But it was something along the lines of little gamble here. Won't be able to buy a nickel for his grandma. <laughs> and as he's like buzzing out of the meeting. Ah, oh, so good, dude. Rest in peace, my guy. Uh, Heath Ledger was a very good actor. Um, I've also watched the new Batman movie with Robert Pattinson. And I think he's a phenomenal actor. Um, him in the movie The Devil All the Time, in which he plays a creepy priest. And he's like, delusions! Delusions! Um, and it's him and Paul Dano, Paul Dano. The guy who plays Riddler. He had a movie called Prisoners. In which he plays Alex Jones. It's the kid who's been kidnapped when he was young. And he then helps kidnap the two girls of Hugh Jackman in that movie. And his acting in that movie and in this Batman movie is exactly the same, dude. Is exactly the same. There's no difference except for, you know, he maybe, like, talks a bit more. <laughs> uh, and I, and uh, when The Dark Knight Rises came out as well, big fan of Bane. I could always do his voice. I, I could also do Batman's voice. So Batman in The Dark Knight, uh, in the Dark Knight when uh, some guy who's also dressed as Batman, he's like, why are you here? You know, what makes you so special? And he goes, I'm not wearing hockey pants. And then he kicks the guy's ass. And in the Dark Knight Rises, you've got Bane. Um, and I can do his voice well. This is, this is what I'm proud of. This is my work. Gotham, take control. Take control of your city. You think darkness is your ally. But you merely adopted the dark. I was born in it. Molded by it. Excellent, dude. You're welcome. You're welcome because I can do a good Bane voice. And um, that's sort of my impressions for the day, though. Um, it's been an exciting time. I've showed you my acting skills. I've showed you a blast from the past as well and um fun times if you've liked this video please like comment and subscribe and turn on the bell notification subscribe now to the channel and i'll continue to make more content for you with that being said um you guys be good looking forward to the weekend and uh, i'll see you in the next one